Jake Donald ideas, culture is power, history is knowledge. So let's talk about LULAC, which p the black Americans be bringing it up in the video that I did about Chicano reparations. I seen Tariq Nasheed bring it up. And yes, I've looked at this Wikipedia. I showed it before. And you know what? That video was low on numbers. So I erased it. And you know what? I didn't even do it that good, read it that good. And I, and I did skip this information by... Because sometimes, like I say, these are just appetizers. I read a little bit and just show you guys for you guys to go read it. But one thing that I did miss out of laziness was this. This is what the black American Africans would talk about when they talk about LULAC. So it says Latin Americans are similar to the NAACP, but let's get straight to the point. LULAC, though the two civil rights groups may have possess some similarities. LULAC tried to establish distance from the African-American civil rights struggle. As LULAC believed that blacks were more oppressed than Latinos, its members thought that joining forces would not strengthen its own struggle for equality. LULAC asserted that Hispanics properly fell into white category uh, of the black and white construction of race. In 1936, the League engaged in serious lobby activities as soon as uh, the uh, USCB perceived that Mexican Americans would be categorized as a part of dark skinned minorities. They lobbied to demonstrate that Hispanic, Latino, Mexican Americans were not racial classifications but cultural groups of racially diverse ethnicity, lineage, ancestry. So, Let's get straight to this down here, too. This is information about LULAC, but we're going to talk about, yes, see, LULAC did bring up reparations before. I don't know if it was this word, but when they sent one million, they, right here it says 500,000, but I read up to 900,000, up to a million Mexican Americans were sent back to the United, from the United States to Mexico, so-called citizens. And this is one of the times when LULAC was, uh, you know, pushing for, the United States to pay us back for what they did. And this is why they believe in assimilation. LULAC followed an assimilation ideology among Chola groups around the Great Depression in the United States. Although the United States had uh, recruited Mexican workers during the first quarter century, the economic problems of the depression increased. And against uh, immigrants and minority groups, as people competed for work in which the federal government deported over 500 Mexican Americans, including, uh, you know, Mexican Americans and Mexicans in general. So it says, but LULAC has been interested in assimilation to the U.S. and admitted as members only ethnic Mexicans who were United States citizens. So migration and assimilation. LULAC promoted a full adoption of its members into the dominant European culture in the belief that this strategy would be the most successful way to combat discrimination. The organization claimed that discrimination was caused by racism, not by economic or political systems. LULAC promoted capitalism, individualism, and through hard work, assimilation into American culture, Mexican Americans can improve their social economic standing. LULAC empathized American patriotism as a path to assimilation. It asserted that Mexican Americans should disavow any allegiance to Mexico and remain permanently in the United States and conform fully to democratic ideals. The League's official song is America, its official language is English, its official prayer is George Washington Prayer. The LULAC's constitution is modeled after the United States. Wow, their prayers called the George Washington. These are some straight coconut ass watered down Mexicans that I would not be a part of. <laughs> because of LULAC's assimilation ideology and advancements of entrance of Mexican American citizens advocates restrictions on migration. It says LULAC's central means of achieving equal status with European Americans was dependent on promoting the image of Mexican resistance as conforming to the cultural norms of the United States. The League recognized that most of the 
dominant society did not distinguish among the culture and attitudes of migrant citizens and natural person of Mexican descendant. New migrants from Mexico resisted the assimilation strategy as they had stronger ties to native culture, limited English, and were willing to work for low wages. Some Mexican Americans knew that they would be lumped together with the recent migrants and perceived as un American, backward, and poor, and would de- be discriminated against. The League members shared the fear of many working class Americans that the new migrants willing to look for work for low wages and contributing to job competition against Mexican-Americans due to their numbers would economically harm Mexican-American citizens. While the ethnic groups had similar tensions between more settled citizens and new migrants, <clears throat> Mexican-Americans were continuing a high rate of migration into the United States, strengthening ties to homeland, culture, and language. See, the major difference of Mexican and Mexican Americans was, con- was the continuing rate of migration into the United States, strengthening ties to homeland. So you could get down right here. Let's go straight down. The Chicano movement. <clears throat> the rise of more radical groups in the 1960s brought change to Lulac. They began to turn away from supporting assimilation. They began to use public protests to bring attention to their cause. The group also began to seek government funding and grants to help support the movement. So something like Lulac, you could call them watered down. You could call them coconuts and wanting to uh, assimilate into the United States, hoping like any other you know, a mulatto, someone who's black and white, was hoping that they could assimilate into the American ideology, being more light-skinned, being mulatto. A lot of half black, half Mexican, half brown and white people always try to assimilate themselves. For one, we could say, trying to use be part white or as an advantage than being pure black, to say, or pure brown. But... Let's talk as in, you know, they probably did this too, that thinking that them being you know, being Spanish and them being a part of the European ideology would help, but it didn't help. And they messed up and they, sh- they had the wrong state of mind by trying to assimilate into the European American culture, <clears throat> believing just because they weren't slave, enslaved by the British, but yes, they were enslaved by European Spanish ideology. Now, <clears throat> as Chicanos, the Chicano movement changed everything, as you read. The newer generation did not accept assimilation, and we were fighting for what is our land back, fighting for our land back other than assimilation, and letting these Europeans know from Canada to Mexico that this is our continent, and they owe us land back. It's more than reparations. Mexicans always fought for land back. If you want to call that reparations, well, we've been doing that. We've been fighting for our land back. And prior, before, whether if Spain, you know, the Criollos, like I say, were the ones who run Mexico and they don't help mestizos and brown people. And a lot of that money went to Spain. Why do you think you think the Criollos want to help make Mexico better? That's the difference between the British and the Spanish. Spanish, the Europeans of the United States. Caucasian built a country using black and brown people in which the Criollos did not use Mexicans in the way to build their country and that they gained into a strong nation like the British did. So other than that, yes, I would say LULAC had a coconut state of mind. I would not mess with that organization. It probably pretty much still is a watered down organization. I would Uh, believe to expect so chicanos learn about the chicano movement and there is a difference between latinos and chicanos and we're always going to have coconuts and there's always going to be the people who are going to be want assimilation and who are coconuts and people who are resistant and want you know culture and power and history and heritage and our land back culture is power history is knowledge always leave your thoughts and comments give me a like tell me what you think about this information peace out chicanos